So for the past five years, I've been reading the Bible every single day for about 30 minutes. And during that time, I have now almost finished the Bible for the second time. And I want to share with you a technique that I learned early on in my Christian journey, but only really implemented about three years ago, which has made a huge difference. Now, this technique is called SOAP. It stands for Scripture, Observation, Application and Practical. Now, a lot of people change the P for practical for prayer. Now, prayer is something entirely separate to our Bible reading. It is integral in our faith as Christians. But to really get the best out of your quiet times, as I like to call them, which are my times reading the Bible, then you need to write down a practical. Then we go and pray. Now, why do we need a study method when we read our Bibles in the morning? We need a study method because of what the Bible says in James chapter 1. I'm just going to go get my Bible. I didn't bring it with me to do this. I want to map it. Ugh, I'm back. Bible. This is my Bible. So I'm going to read from the NIV version of the Bible. We will talk about versions of the Bible in a different video. Um, there is no perfect translation of the Bible, but in these videos, the majority of the time, I will read from the NIV version because it is the most accessible. So the Bible reads, Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. So if you can relate with what I was saying in terms of, you know, reading the Bible in the morning and then leaving and forgetting what you've been reading and specifically how it applies to you and what practical you're going to do that day and just remembering the scriptures as a whole, then did you really have the word planted in you like the scriptures saying we need to do to make sure that we can be saved? Because how can we become unsaved is because of the moral filth that is so prevalent in the world around us. If we are not having the word of God planted in us, you can easily fall into that life and forget about God. So what do we need to do? How do we overcome this? Well, good for us, the scripture carries on. It reads, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who looks into the word, but does not do what it says, is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So in verse 21, the Bible teaches us that we can be saved by accepting the word that is planted in us. Can being the primary word there. Can means that there's a possibility that you might not be saved by having the word planted in you. Why? That seems crazy, right? Well, because of what it says next that we read, where it says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves as to say that God wants us to do more than just listen to the word. He wants us to be doers of the word, not just listeners. Because he says that someone who listens to the word is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and immediately forgets what he looks like. As to say that if we woke up in the morning, our hair is never going to look perfect when we wake up. It's always going to be a mess. And sometimes you might have sleep in your eye. There's gonna be things you're gonna need to sort out. You're never gonna look in the mirror with your hair a mess and everything it, like gunk everywhere and think, okay, great, and just walk out. You'd spend five minutes doing something about it. Now, a lot of people, when they read the Bible, which is like a mirror of spirituality, look at our face, look at our reflection, but yet, see that we're not up to scratch, but do nothing about it. We go out of the door after looking in the mirror with gunk in our eyes, with our hair a mess, and we think that is okay and we have no ambition to change it. And if you don't, you're deceiving yourself. You're saying, I'm a Christian, 
I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe in following his word. I don't believe that he's calling me to change. I believe that I'm just going to read the word and that's all he wants me to do. And then it reads from verse 25, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they'll be blessed in what they do. So here we see that scriptures tell us to look intently into his law. And this is where the study comes in. And then it says, not forgetting what they have heard. So here again, you see the importance of a study method because study methods can help you to learn and memorize what you are reading and then doing it. And then that person will be blessed in what they do. And that's what we want. We want blessed days. If you look at the original meaning of this word, it means happy. So getting into the meat and potatoes of this. Soap, scripture, observation, application, and practical. First, there is scripture. So what is really important is that you, well, this is my Bible, but imagine this is a notebook, is that you have a notebook to take notes in during your quiet times. This is something that I didn't really do when I first started out and I really suffered from it. And just out of pride, people had told me to have a notebook and take them, but I just didn't. I was never really an academic person and it kind of felt a lot more academic and I just wanted to read and get my knowledge that way. Again, I was not really that James chapter one person. I was a person just merely reading and not memorizing and therefore not doing what I was supposed to be doing. So scripture, get a notebook and write down what scripture you are going to be reading. Then what are you going to do? Next comes the observation. Now, in observation, this is a case of you read maybe a chapter, a passage, a paragraph, or maybe even a sentence. And if something stands out to you, write it down. Now, there are two key things that I'd recommend that you look out for if nothing is initially jumping out to you. Say you've read a whole chapter and you've connected with nothing. Number one is just write down what happened. Just in a summary form, this happened. And you'll be surprised at what you will then start to connect with as you summarize what happened in the chapter. Second, what I recommend is ask yourself two questions. What does what I'm reading tell me about the character or nature of man? Or what does I'm reading tell me about the character and nature of God? Now, in those situations, it tells me either what does God want me to change or become better at, or it's telling me where I can go wrong or who I can aspire to be. Next, after you've written down an observation, you're going to write down an application. Okay, this is what I'm seeing, but how does this apply to me? Where do I need to become better? Who do I want to be like or don't want to be like? Or what does God want me to do or who does he want me to become? And then finally, you're going to write down your practical. What can I practically do today to implement this scripture? So let's look at the example of Acts chapter 17, verse 10 to 12. As soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed, as did a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. So, scripture, Acts chapter 17, verse 10 to 12. Observation. Paul and Silas arrive in Berea, and they meet the Berean Jews who are noble character and they examine the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Application. Am I like the Berean Jews? God, the Bible, says that these men were noble. Why were these men noble? What was their character? They eagerly examined the scriptures every day and they wanted to see if what Paul said was true, not based on their feelings, but based on the Bible. And they went back to the Bible to study it. Am I reading my Bible every day? Am I doing it eagerly? 
Am I examining it? Practical. I'm going to read my Bible every single day from now on. And practicals can be that radical. Or they can be a lot smaller. Say you're already reading your Bible every day, then you can then make a practical of, I'm going to really examine the scriptures and give myself an extra 30 minutes tomorrow to get some extra nuggets as I read the Bible. So that's it. That is the SOAP method. Some of you might be listening to this and thinking, you know what, that sounds like a lot of work. I'm not going to do it. But do not deceive yourselves. Do not merely just examine the word. You've got to really apply it. You've got to be doers of the word and not hearers only. It's dangerous. Like these things aren't a joke, you know, like the Bible is our standard. It is really our guidebook for life. When you hear these things, it's not me saying it. If it's in the Bible, it is God saying this is how he wants you to be. It's not easy. These things are not kind of enjoyable sometimes. Sometimes you might not want to read your Bible, but it isn't okay not to do it. The Bible says that we have to carry our cross daily. We've got to deny ourselves, And reading our Bibles every single day, frankly, is a part of that. And if you don't, you can't expect or blame God if you don't live a blessed life. You can't expect God to really, you know, encourage you in your life if you are not learning the Bible, if you're not memorizing it, if you're not putting it on your on your heart. There are so many scriptures that you can study out, perhaps for your quiet times, which will really enforce what I'm sharing here. But yes, I hope this has been helpful. This method has transformed my faith and my relationship with God, and I hope it does the same for you as well.